That's enough space for you, Ma? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna give you one of these too. So we do for the community. No problem. You enjoy your day now. <laughs> Going on to my champs all around the world. That's Champ Jones, reporting live in the North End of Hartford, with our chatting with the community. This time, we're right here on Garden Woo! and Greenfield Streets. And y'all know how we do. We staying positive, staying motivated, and staying real. We got our black facts, our champ codes of conduct, trauma symptom information, community contacts, and newspapers. And all we want to do today, once again, is build with the community, build some camaraderie, possibly organization, exchange some contact information, and start rebuilding from the bottom up. That's the whole purpose of this whole platform anyway, is to voice the voiceless, as they say. Even though I don't feel necessarily we're voiceless, we're just not being heard, if that makes sense. We've been screaming long enough, yelling long enough, talking long enough. So I don't think it's a matter of being voiceless. It's just being ignored, people ignoring you or, or disregarding you. So in that case, we got to overstand we're not voiceless. When you take on that concept of being voiceless, you won't speak up. But if you know you're speaking and being ignored, what you usually do, you either get louder or you walk away. In this case, we're not walking away, so we just got to get louder. What up, sis? You know, I miss you, girl. You know, I don't go to that Dunkin' Donuts no more. I, I, I ain't going to do them dirty and say what I want to say, but I don't even go there no more. But, you know, I miss you, sis. Hope I, I can't wait to see you at the Bell reunion. Good, brother. Y'all want some of these? Oh, cool. cool. Brother Lovejoy, I'm doing what you taught me, Lovejoy. I, I tell people every time I know how y'all brothers doing. I tell, you, tell everybody I meet them when they come to when it come to love joy, I'm a soldier of love joy. I'm a soldier of love joy. Matter of fact, let's get let's get big brother here. I ain't never do this one before. Let's do this. Let's do it like this. This is the first ever. You haven't been in either, sis? I'm telling you, sis, I can't do it, dear sis. Big bruh, what's going on, man? You go, brother. What up, mm -hmm. super soldier? It's the champ of conduct. It's just a normality. We want to develop in our neighborhoods to build some community camaraderie. Some normality of peace and love, you know? So just a few little things that if we all follow, at least try to follow, we create some type of organization here, you know what I'm saying? Yep, every other Thursday, we on one corner on the north and somewhere it's not really planned per se. But yeah. we on some corner somewhere doing the same get up. We got trauma symptoms and a resource number yeah. that you could call to get services. We got this, we got the black facts to speak on facts that go in our community. And we got the um resource book right here. So if you leave your number and wanna get contacted whenever we do something like this to come and join it's or whatever. It's good that you guys are out here doing that for the community. Man. Yep, yep, I mean, yep. Oh, man. good people out here like y'all. Oh, man, you a good person too, man. Oh, I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Be safe. Yep, 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 no problem. Brother, love joy, man. What's happening, brother? What's happening, man? Hey, man, I'm just, what, what they say, just answering the call, brother. I see it. I see it, brother. You out there, man. Hey, hey, we ain't gonna do that, Love Joy. I know you modest, but you laid that template, bro. Oh, you laid man. the template of how to go where, where, where they don't want to go. I knew you was coming behind me, bro. I'm trying to tell you. 
I, I, I was behind you so tough, I almost had your wallet in my hand. <laughs> almost had your wallet in my hand. That's that's how close I was holding on, brother, man. Listen, man, you know, I'm speaking this Sunday, right? And the title is The Power of Unity in the Community. Oh, man. The Power oh. of Unity in the Community. And it's you. It's people like you. No, man. It's, it's, it's us. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, listen, man. You know, I'm I, I learned a lot. Good brother, I'm going to let you get back to your post, man. But teach hard, soldier. Teach hard. Uh, like like I said earlier, man, I'm a soldier of love, Joy. So as long as you leading, I'm following. Love you, yes, man. Yes, brother. Love yes, you brother. more, love, Joy. Yes, you already sir. know, bro. I'll see you soon. Yes, sir. Uh, That was brother, big brother, big brother Lovejoy. I'm going to tell y'all a funny story, right? So y'all could just get up to date as far as me and Lovejoy, because y'all see we got a big brother, little brother, father, son, best friend, minister, student, tutor, student type of relationship. My mother, when I was, I graduated in North Webster in 2000. So I was on my way to Court Middle in 2001. And before school started, they had a summer program um, called 21st Century. And my mother, when I came home one day, she was like, yeah, you're going to the summer program called 21st Century. I was heated. So I'm like, man, summer school or summer, I'm not trying to do that. Like, let alone, I just said, I graduated in 2000. So this still 1999, 2000. So we're still lit. What up, baby? Yo, take, take one of these for you and the family, bro. Oh man, the superstar himself, man. Oh, wait, this way is the How y'all make you doing? Everything cool? Oh, um, I ain't seen you in a minute, man. How you, bro? You know I'm back in the PJs, right? Really? Yeah. Wait, Yeah, I'm here. Oh, you be safe. Keep doing what you're doing. That's beautiful, yo. I love you more, bro. We're gonna build, man. Yeah, keep doing your father thing, man. Yes, sir. All right, so back to the story. That's my boy Marley right there, man. How you doing, sir? Baby, how you doing? I'm doing well. How you doing? How y'all boys doing, man? You all right? Y'all y'all doing them push-ups, man? Get to them push-ups, man. The whole pops and baby sits down. Oh, Mac, listen to pops, man. He ain't gonna steer y'all wrong. Damn right. Yes, sir. So, um, yeah, I um, my mother like you going to this program called 21st Century. So I'm like, man, I don't wanna go. I don't wanna go. Coming in. I see a few familiar faces, just, you know, you know what I'm saying, growing up. So you're like, all right, I see my boy in here. Oh, snap, that's my other boy right there. Maybe this won't be too bad. Then the counselors, the counselors at the time, if I was about to be a freshman, you no know, matter if I was going into court, so if I was going into court, these counselors was like juniors in high school, so they wasn't that older than us, but they was older than us to be more mature. What up, bro? So in the mix of me going there, it was this dude who was always smiling. But when it was time to be serious, you definitely heard this man like. That's you, keep no problem. So like I said, Lovejoy had um the counselors that was above us. They was like juniors or seniors, so they wasn't older, older, older than us, but they was older than us, enough to relate and reach. So, for me, once you find out who your counselor was, you're like, all right, it's gonna be all right. So you will often hear, feel me, this brother in the hallway laughing. Back then, Lovejoy was like, 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 Lovejoy still got size on him, but Lovejoy was like, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, he had that father physique, he had that whole delivery, so it's like, when he'll come to you, he'll talk to you, make you laugh, crack a joke, but you mess around and be on some disrespectful shit or come out your mouth sideways, home, I put it like this, Love Joy only had to warn you one time. One time. He'll hit you with that soldier. Come here, let me speak to you, soldier. Bonk, 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 but it's full eye contact. Body language is like this, man. I'm not playing with you. We not playing right now. This is dead serious. So mind you, this is 1999, 2000. I went through the 21st century program up until my freshman year at Hartford High, which was what, 2003. So I was in that program my whole adolescence, damn me. That program, bro, saved my life. I wouldn't even lie to you. Think about what I'm telling y'all, 1999, 
2000, 2001, and 2002. That's four years. Those four summers, those four summers in Hartford, go look up those four summers and think about what was going on. Even some of Big Sis, you was, oh, oh what up, cuz? I ain't mean to not say nothing to you. What up, buying them, girl? You know, I, I gotta come to Carolina. I gotta come eat some red clay with you. Go, go in the cornfields, you know? But needless to say, 1999 and 2002 was one, one of the toughest durations for me because that's around the time I just moved to California. I mean, moved to California, just moved to Connecticut from California. So my first initial years here, I got an accent from the West Coast. I sound just like somebody from Cali. Dudes ranking. What up, baby? Dudes ranking on me. I'm, I'm getting into fights. Niggas fighting in the bathroom, and it was getting crazy to the point my mother was getting worried. Like, but that program, that program, the 21st century program, more or less the program, the leadership by Lovejoy. Because you can change the name of programs, but you, the leadership is what stays. It's the glue, not the title. I've seen Lovejoy change lives. My boy ain't sitting up. Come on, man. What up, baby? What up? You got to pull up on me one day. I still do the camera joint too, yo. Come through. I got to give you my number. All right, all right. But yeah, um, Lovejoy, Lovejoy, Lovejoy saved my life, bro. Did a big part. Come on, man. Y'all pulling up on me in the big body bins and all that. But then let me get $400, nigga, till next week, nigga. What up, though? You still doing your rapping shit? Send me the joint so I could... You still got the same Instagram shit? Oh, yeah. And what's it, what is it again? Rich. Kid Rich. Kid. Rich Kid. Rich Kid. Rich Kid. I think I, I'm still following you. I believe I'm still in. What was your number? 860. Yup. 860-840-5997. Yes, sir. Send that to me, bro. And I'll make, we can link up and I, you know what I'm saying? And we can get you an interview or something. Get that little algorithm popping. Um, my joint, I call chatting with the community. I just got resources and talk to people walking by, driving by, build, express some love real quick for a little while, and after that, go do me. You know what I'm saying? But send me a joint, get at you, man. Uh, I'm happy to see y'all still holding it down, too, man. Keep that going, bro. All right? <laughs> but, um, I'm sorry, y'all. But, yeah, man, like I said, man, Love Joy, Love Joy saved my life, bro. That program, because... At that time, we all wanted to be like the dudes we seen around the way with the Cotties, you know what I'm saying? The girls, the cars, the bread. 99, 2000, bro. Think about that. This Jay-Z dynasty Rockefeller days. Like, dudes wanted to be out here. That 21st century program kept me so grounded because it was a reality check and it was just the development process and the um, accountability that Lovejoy made you obtain and um, uphold for that matter, the respect you learned from um, your peers. That's how uh, initially I got to be cool with a lot of people, a lot of people through that 21st century program. A lot of my friends that I met from, from Stowe Village, from Mountain Court, from the Ave, everywhere, I met them, a lot of them through that program, honestly. And that's how we got to be a report because it's not the school, it's what, 20 some kids, so it's a small number, broken down into groups, you do activities together, you do all of that. Bro, by school, we damn near best friends. I used to be able to, I used to go to Parker, I ain't gonna say not had no problems, but we used to go to Parker, we used to go to, um, like I said, Freddie Wish, we used to be able to, um, the police station, and these was dudes, these was our friends, like, they had their friends from the hood they dealt with, but needless to say, we was cool with. That program saved a lot of people, bro. I know a lot of people that, to this day, we talk about that program. So Lovejoy, if you watching, or anybody that know Lovejoy, remind him, his service has been so, so, so extravagant, man. So necessary and so legendary that, man, just be careful with Lovejoy if I'm around. <laughs> But back to the peace family. Oh, yeah, sis, we definitely need to bring that back. I mean, we still got it. Lovejoy got some programs. The city got some programs. But honestly, sis, between me and you, the feeling I had in that program and the way Harper was then, I don't think that could be duplicated. That was one for the books. A lot of my friends, I got friends that's in jail for a long time and friends that's dead that I met in that program. Seriously, man. So I'm always going to hold that program in a high, 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 um, no, a highlight. 
But today, yeah, man, um, like I said, it's the power hour. We right here on Greenfield and Garden Street. And today, I wanted to reach the people about, let's see, it was a few things I had in mind. The one that stuck out the most was just getting back to healthy households. Healthy household with parents, healthy households with communication, healthy households with um, just the whole community and building some type of, um, some type of, um, how can I put it, paradigm to where we normalize voicing our opinions in a building manner. You know what I'm saying? Because we know how to speak to each other. We know how to build. We know how to have a good time. But we have a lot of wounds and unhealed um, traumas that until we correct it, one of our main communication outlets would be violence. And a lot of us grew up in homes where violence was normalized. Like, literally, violence was normalized in the home. So it's nothing to go outside and get to a scrap. It's nothing to go to somewhere else where nobody know you and get into a scrap because in the house, this is what we do. We held to a standard in the house of getting busy. So we have to understand that a lot of the results that we um, feel are detrimental to us and our family and our friends stem from our household because quite as kept, I know I was raised with great manners, great love, great empathy, great transparency. I was raised in such a way that I can't believe how I was raised. But needless to say, them same parents reminded me like, man, nigga, you know, you, somebody hit you, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I overstand a lot of my behaviors and a piece of it I know is the normality that we had to adapt to in impoverished neighborhoods. So a lot of the training and lessons we learn essentially stems for the result in being in poverty. And that's why you always got that saying what they say, oh, you can take a brother out the hood, but you can't take the hood out the brother and all that. In other words, you could take me out of a trauma environment, but you can't take the trauma out of me. That's basically what that's saying. It's not nothing about being a hood together. It's basically saying, bro, I could take you to a new environment, and until you heal, you're still going to act like you're in that environment. That's why when we go, they be like, damn, people don't know how to act nowhere. Oh damn, look at these black, y'all know how to chill, relax, man, y'all wanna know. It's not about we don't know how to behave. We're from an atmosphere where this is the normality. This is, this is damn near the expectation. So when you take me and put me somewhere for 35 minutes, you can't expect me just to turn that switch off, especially in the household where the ones who we hold near and dear perpetuate these behaviors, attitudes, and concepts. So. I want to challenge our families, man. I want to challenge our families to bring something new to the table. Let's start incorporating more reading, more act, um, active, active um, community organizing. I would love for us to get basketball games back going, football games and associations, but until we're healed, we're going to still react out of that trauma, which is perfectly, I ain't going to say perfectly fine, but it's normal. And until we can recognize what's the cue and, and, and prop that's going to set off a triggering reaction, it's our best bet to just take small steps. We don't got to rush. Don't let social media, the news, and all these other places make you feel like you got to rush your life, rush your legacy, rush your goals. The earth, as far as I know, it hasn't been nowhere left in 34 years. I'm 34. As long as I've been here, the earth ain't going nowhere. New Orleans still where it's at. Florida studio, New York studio, everything's still where it's at. So in that sense, there's no need to make a rush. Society wants us to rush because money moves fast. Money got to keep going. So of course we got to always be moving. But you got to ask yourself, do I want to move to keep up with money? Or do I want to enjoy the earth? Do I want to enjoy real value? We put value on money. Until you put value on money, it doesn't have the, 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 the value that we created. It's a necessity to the extent of a trade. But we have unfortunate circumstances in which a lot of our brothers and sisters, for that matter, that fell victim, sorry, these mosquitoes tear me up, that fell victim to violence due to something having money involved. And now you have outsiders that may think like, oh, they'll do anything for money. No, it's not, we'll do anything for money. When your body 
needs a necessity, it will do whatever it needs to fix that mechanism or to be in survival mode. And since in this society, in this country, the quickest and easiest resource to have to feed yourself is a dollar bill, that's, that's what it is. It's not more so the money itself is what the money can provide for somebody who's never had nothing in the first place. And just like I said, when you could take somebody out of somewhere and they still react, if I've been poor all my life, I'm not going to think this money that I got now solved all my problems. No, it's going to take me a while. I'm going to still live like, how you doing, brother? I'm going to still live like I got a cop raviolis in the house. Or if not with that, I'm going to blow this money so fast because I'm taking care of past wants, past urges. So it puts us in positions where it's like we running in circles. We're not really building because we're trying to keep up with the Joneses. We're trying to be the best at everything. We're the best at everything, so we're not establishing nothing. And when our children grow up and see this, unbeknownst to us, that's their normality. We took time to learn. Kids grow up and just see it off the rip, that's their normality. So we have to reach a baseline of, 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 of normality for not only our household, but for our community. Like, there's no reason why we should have trash still out on the street, bro. I get it. I get it, but come on, man. This is one of them arguments that they always want to hold against us. Look at how they treat their own communities and look at how they leave it. And trust me, I'd have been one of the ones at one point where I was like, man, shit, I don't own this building. Or oh, this they job. This is the city job. They're supposed to clean it up. Nah, man. Your, your community is a reflection of you, man. And it took a while to overstand that. I always understood, hey, mama? I always understood it, but I didn't overstand it. Our communities are a reflection of us, and we're a reflection of our community. So we have to get those. What's going on, bro? How y'all doing, bro? We got to start getting those um, individuals that we know that could play a real role out here, out the house. You necessary, bro. Just like we got um, our other brothers and family members that may be outside for other reasons. Well, we got to balance it. We got to balance it. We need a lot more of those who's watching, those who's been doing this work, those who do their own lane to be outside so it could create a different dynamic. It could create a different safety net. Like, you hear a lot of people speak about marches. Like, oh, yeah, marches not going to work. Marches is old. You got to overstand. Marches is not just about the march per se. Like, I'm one of the ones that have felt like that too, but even I have to understand. There was a time where that's what our people was was known to do. That's what made them comfortable, coming together and walking. A lot of us now may feel like, oh, that's old, that's outdated, that's not gonna really change nothing. Okay, but if that's what it's gonna take to get our elders outside, if having a march or a walk is gonna get the elders outside that can bridge this gap that no, back when, when this occurred, this is how we did it. Now we use the youth that's knowing what's going on now and we build that middle. We build that middle gap. Now we got the youth to translate with people who my age, 30 in between 40, to speak with those 50 to 80 or older and bridge that gap, bro. We can set a whole different template of living in inner city, po poverty stricken inner cities in the nation, starting with Hartford. It's, I'm not gonna say it's not hard, but I'm so confident. I'm so confident in our people that I know, man, if each, if we could get five people from each neighborhood, that, that whole weight, five dudes that whole weight, or, or, or five big homies that whole weight in, in each neighborhood in Hartford to get on the same page and we build something as far as yo, every weekend each community should have this paper speaking to this, or each weekend this block should have a cookout, each weekend this community is going to have free this amongst each other. We don't got to get the news involved, we don't got to get no media involved this could be straight just word of mouth and people catch the flow if they catch it man just like how we make up slang that's how we make up dances a lot of niggas wasn't here when that was made they just caught the oh 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 and got into it let's create that same let's use that same energy for something else how you doing mom you know i love you mama long love joy oh lord you know i over love the love joys y'all are my second parents, <laughs> I over, over appreciate you, ma. I really do, and I definitely will DM you. I definitely will. Byron, what up, what up, Byron? Bundles, what up, baby? That's my boy, man. Here you go, ma. Hey, Dad. 
No problem. I knew my boy Ty, man. Me and Ty go back to Bose Park Stillers. When he went to Fox and I went to court, we met because we was, we got, it's funny, we got cool because we was talking to the same girl. That's another conversation, but that's my boy. <laughs> I know Ty remember that, but that's my boy, man. We go back, man. Holla at my boy, man. He got his own clothing line, block work clothing. You know what I'm saying? Go check that out, man. My boy got a lot of original joints over there and something that's affordable for the community. Something that's Hartford owned, created. You know what I'm saying? Support my boy. His name right now in this joint is Ty Bundles. Follow him. Block work clothing. But back to the normalities, right? I understand that, you know, some of us may not have it more than others. Some of us may have more than others. And that's where we got to bridge the gap and understand that until we overstand sharing, sharing words, sharing gestures, sharing information. We got some people that still walk in the streets with um, education from the 70s. People with education from the 80s. People who dropped out of school from the 90s. People who dropped out of school in the 60s. We have a plethora of different levels of consciousness, competence, and comprehension. We got different levels of that, and that's not necessarily our fault. That's nobody's fault, and nothing to be ashamed. However, that just shows that information has to be in circulation. We have to start, just like how, if I, like say, oh, bong, watch this example analogy. It's just like this. Imagine everybody outside, but I got an iPhone. He got a Nokia. She got a T-Mobile. He got a Sidekick. He got a um, Sprint um, joint. She got a razor. He got a chirp. I may not be able to send you a certain message. If I have an iPhone, you may not get um, a GIF or them GIF joints or whatever the animations. You may not get it if you got a Boost phone. If you got a Boost phone, you're not going to get pictures. You're not going to get a certain picture from me that I'm trying to give you. We could talk. We can exchange words. On a, on a surface level, but the whole pitch and the whole delivery, you're not going to be able to get it because the system is outdated. So we got a lot of family whose brains are still on and post, and post, and post, violence, violence, violence. That's outdated from a time where their trauma experience them from somewhere earlier. So their adaptation and now to what we know, oh man, these kids, they just on the um, Instagram, on the Facebook talking crazy. Oh man, that's all they know is disrespect and talking crazy. Some of us that was born at a certain time can interpret and, and, and understand that. Certain people from a different time not hearing that. We're talking about people who was in jail in the 70s, the 80s. They, they tolerance is low when it's come to disrespect. Now think about that on a, a loving level, a caring level. Uh, an, a, a educational level. We got people in our family that's out here now that haven't had a hug since 1984. Haven't been told I love you since 1973. Haven't read a book since they graduated Weaver in 84, 89. Like, that's what's going on. So when a lot of us come with different perspectives and different alleys, some of us may take it and get offended because our information and interpretation is outdated. We haven't been upgraded. So we have to walk around like plugging in your phone in my laptop and getting an upgrade. We gotta walk around and upgrade each other. That gotta be the consciousness right now. If we see one of us is not um, up to par or up to date, there you go, up to date, let's upload the software. We gotta upload the software. Brother, let me up the, um, up, upgrade your software, brother. We not violence no more, we not on that. I understand back in 93, 92, this shit was real out here. So I understand why you reacting the way you do. But let me upgrade you, bro. We in 2022 now. All we got is us like it's been going on. Now I just want to help you and extend my arm. Upgrade. That's what we got to do. Upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Update, update, update. Spread new information. Give new reading materials. No lie, yo. This is so real. I remember being there. This is how old the books was in court. You know, you open up the book, and then you can, like, sign your name, you got to put your year in, and you open the book, you be like, oh, snap, look, yo, this is my uncle name back in 78. Oh, look, yo, this is my mom name, I told you, yo, look, bro, I told you my mom went here. 
that's how old them books was. On the, now we got they got laptops and all that. But when I was in school, we still had the books that was passed down, bruh. And you open them shit since 1974. Somebody oldest book was 1972. And we looking like, damn, we using the same books from when my father was in school? This is bug. Outdated information. That's why them private schools, when I was a kid, they was blasting us out the water when it came to test schools. We was talented, hungry, smart children. But the information that we were fed was outdated. That's almost like, for an example, if I'm if I'm a boxer, right? Hypothetically speaking, if I'm a boxer, and let's say I weigh 135, my fight range should be between 135, 137, 139 pushing it. But, but maybe 135, 137. If I get in the ring with somebody that's 215, even if I try my hardest, fight my slickest, dodge all my joints, use the jab, bob and weave there's still a different disadvantage there. And as fighters, we're taught, you gotta be strong, no complaining, man, size don't matter. We're taught to ignore real detail that affects our real outcome. Now, in boxing, people, we don't like to be like, all right, man, yeah, man, only reason why you beat me because you're 10 pounds heavier than me. The people who I spar with or box with, I've never heard them say that. It's, I should've won. No, it's no excuses. And that's cool to an extent, but in this sense, we can't normalize disadvantages and think it's cool because we are resilient. That's that's torture. That's us sitting around saying, bruh, I know they got a hundred thousand dollars worth of grant money while we sitting on five hundred, but we not gonna complain. That's cool. But look at that, bruh. Who we can't do but so much. We can do but so much with that. So until we understand, you know, it's bigger than just what we have or what we can do, but it's, let's raise our voice. We're not voiceless, we're just being ignored. And if you keep messing with somebody who's ignoring you, they're going to eventually crack. They're either going to turn around and say, what you want? What? You ever kept bothering somebody or picking on somebody? Then they find what you want, what you want? Now you got their attention. Prior to that, they're going to do all they can. It's not that they don't hear you. They just trying their best to ignore you. And the best thing to beat that with is action, man. Do you know how Hartford would look if every Friday, Hartford wide, we know Friday or between six and nine o'clock, that's 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 the, the peace tree. The peace tree or, or, or something with peace. Feel me between six and nine, nothing going on in Hartford. Each corner should have a grill, or every other corner should have a grill, um, music or something. For somebody to drive through this and see each neighborhood enjoying themselves in that piece for three hours on a Friday throughout the whole city. You know, people are like, yo, what I'm gonna come visit Hartford for? What I'm gonna come visit Connecticut for? You're gonna see the foundation of how to how to how to still manifest black love in the city love. You know what I'm saying? Don't judge us by the buildings. We didn't build these buildings per se. You know what I'm trying to say? Look at the people. We got to look at the things that you can't see or feel. Those are the things we're good at building. Mm. Our people are great with building infrastructures and structures with brick or any material, but we're unmatchable when it comes to building things that you can't see or touch. We know how to use our voice to create music, use our body for dance. We know how to give a look and a certain rhythm of words to make another individual smile. That's, that's a different power. That's a different gift. That's a different amount of money right there. Imagine, uh, just think back to the cookouts or the thin reunions and everybody in that element. And it's just, you forget about whatever you're going through. That's the energy that we have and we know we can create. So why don't we create it while we have it? Why not? I would love to be every other Friday like, yo, bro, I just left the West End. I'm about to go to the South End. I'm in on the North End because my boy home doing the reggae DJ joint on the Avenue. Then my other boy doing the um, 80s hip hop on Barber Street. 
Then on the south, and my boy doing the reggae tone and the hip hop joint. Then my boy in the reggae, like with each side of Hartford, you got a different type of music going on or a different food. So in order for you to get a certain food or hear a certain music, you got to go with show respect to that community. And while you in that community, you build and break bread and exchange numbers. So next time we got another one, y'all can come over here and feel comfortable with it. I'm getting pissed off right now, bro. I hate talking like this because I see it. I see it happening. I get pissed off because I know we can do it, man. I know we can do it. Like, and it would be such a gorgeous atmosphere for our children. And that's why I value our ancestors. Those who were um, in their 20s and 30s or even 18 age years during the 60s and 50s. Those individuals, man, they bring a different um, reminder of what our people should be on. And they'll remind you too, ain't nobody perfect. They went through their trials and tribulations. They fought their demons, but they will remind you. Yeah, we used to fight, but we wasn't doing all what they doing that. Oh man, my friend, I couldn't come on my friend, mother, if, if we ain't speak, or I right, we couldn't do like it reminds you like, wow. I thought I grew up strict over the high expectation of standard. Y'all's was real intense, but when you look at the equation, that intense standard and those high expectations creates quality people. Those high standards and those high expectations create great people. When we cultivate an atmosphere, when I don't expect you to read, I don't expect you to be smart. I don't expect you to be respectful. I don't respect you to love yourself. What type of person you think we creating? Y'all not hearing me. Mama Love Joy, I don't think they hearing me, Mama Love Joy. Look at what we're creating. We got people that'll drive by and be like, yeah, them my little dudes, they ready to get busy. X, Y, and Z, and it's like, damn, baby. Let my boy get a chance to live home life. And I get it, I get it, I really get it, I really, really get it. However, my ancestors passed on something to me I can't run from, and that's a vision and a love for our people that I can't shake. I tried it. Negroes get on my nerves all day, every day. I find reasons to be not around us sometimes, but needless to say, I can't escape that. I can't escape it. It's, it's something intertwined in my soul, but this is the funny thing. We want it all the same. So I know you got it in you. I know you do. Why do I know? We wouldn't be friends, bruh. There's people I haven't spoken to in years, needless to say. But what I will say is, if we do speak and we on the same accord, you can do any and everything that you deem that I'm doing great. And y'all know me, if y'all should, if y'all don't, I'm going to tell you, I'm a modest person. I don't like praise. I don't like congratulations. I don't like none of that. I grew up in a household where I was often told, I'm not congratulating you for something you should be doing. I grew up in a household where I was told, I'm not going to congratulate you for something you should be doing. <clears throat> I grew up in a household where I was told, I'm not congratulating you on something you should be doing. So when people say certain things to me, I love it. I embrace it. Thank you. But it's hard because I'm not supposed to get congratulated for something that I'm supposed to be doing. And that's a fact. And that's a fact. And that's and that's one of the things that I hope to look forward to changing with a lot of our youth is the sense of entitlement without responding to responsibility. I love our youth. I love these young dudes. I'll give them whatever they want. And they know that. However, they know, bro, I'm not giving you nothing for free. Rest in peace, Robert Hudson. Pops, man, he used to preach to us, bro, ain't nothing free. Robert Hudson, a.k.a. Shy, a.k.a. Shy Town. That's Pops right here. He always told us, man, ain't nothing free. Ain't nothing free. So we grew up knowing, ain't nothing about to fall in my lap. I may get lazy. I may get... Um, you know what I'm saying? Complacent sometimes, content sometimes. But needless to say, I knew and always well know nothing in life is free. And we're living in a circumstance now with validation, 
um, praise, and all these things is the food of the day. People feed off that and they want it fast. They want it fast. Let me post this picture and get 48 likes and I'm lit. Let me post this video and get 5,000 views and, I, and people thirst for that. And when they don't meet that standard, they look at themselves and internalize that and feel like they're failures or they'll look at the people around them like people don't F with me. Now, when you got a whole city like that, we all out of disarray. You see what I'm saying? So, honestly, it's... People hear it all the time. They heard it before. They tired of hearing it. They don't want to hear it at all. But <laughs> it starts with us, baby. It starts with us, baby. And I'm one of them ones that's like this. I'm, matter of fact, I'm not even gonna put it. I'm gonna put it like this. Brother Carl has a way of saying that when it comes to our youth, you got 20% on the left, 20% on the right, and that 60% in the middle. Come on, man. Pat Bev gets signed to the Lakers and I don't hear from dudes. What's going on, man? What you doing? You doing YouTube? Yeah, my little chat with the community joint, man. Just building. One of these days, come through, bro. I'll, I'll let you know the next, because I do it in different locations. All right, bro. Be safe. Always the pleasure seeing you, yo. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, I don't forgot what I was talking about. I'm messing with my boy. How you doing, man? Getting it. Damn, I don't forgot what I was talking about. There we go, thank you, mama. The validation and the acceptance that we're thirsting for, that's fast, we want it fast, and trust me, I know that feeling, I know that feeling. It's nothing like getting quick validation, it ain't nothing like that, but needless to say, when that validation makes up a part of your reality, like you can't live without it, now we're dealing with a different animal. And I say that say because I'm not a female, I don't know how it is to not hear um, I'm not pretty, or I'm not, I'm not sure on uh, how it feels not to be attractive. As a dude, I know how it feels when niggas like you don't get busy, and you gotta be in a predicament where you gotta show and prove. Man, that will haunt your brain, man. I'm, yo, I hate going there, because that's a part of me that just, just bring me back to some trauma shit, yo, and I hate it. But needless to say, our boys are put in predicaments where they gotta make decisions that they don't want to make. Thank you, mama. The brother Carl um, um, perspective. 20 on the left, 20 on, on the right. And you got the 60% in the middle. The 20 on the left, they know this is what they want. I want to be involved with crime. I want to be involved with violence. This is what I'm going to do. That's the 20% on the left. Once again, this is brother Carl, so give him his credit for this. He said the other 20% on the right is the kids that know, man, I want to go to school. I want to do right, I want to go to college, this is my dream, and they on that. It's that 60% that's in the middle. That 60% in the middle, that's like this. I remember being one of those 60%. Because one day it could be like, yo, you know what, man, I'm straight, man. I, I want to, I just finished watching Higher Learning. My mom made me watch Higher Learning, so I'm like, yeah, man, I want to, you know what I'm saying? Let me get, I want to be the smart kid in the hood. I want to be the... The cool kid in the hood. The nigga a week later, I'll spend a week with my pops or be outside. Man, I'm trying to be active. This is popping. Damn them books, they ain't going nowhere. Look, 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 look. The white man don't like don't love me anyway. Once we started learning to um interpret that, that the white man don't love us and the school ain't for us, and it just the, yo, when they was like, oh, the school creates slaves, you ain't nothing but a slave, we was finding every and any reason not to go to school. Not to say I didn't, I went to school every day, but needless to say, there were theories in mind to keep you on that path to not want to do nothing but be outside. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't know no better, get updated or upgraded information, and that's your normality, and that's what you was taught on, and that's your, that's your joint right there. You got dudes who still walk around like that. Now, I won't say that science is wrong in the sense of um, raising the spirit of our people. Sometimes we gotta use analogies, um, similes, metaphors, false stories, and things to make sense. So it's cool to hit them with, you know, the white man is the devil, if that's gonna increase you to be the God that you are. But don't walk around saying the white man is the devil when you killing niggas, like, you, you can't serve two gods, bro. You can't serve two gods, metaphorically speaking. But what I will say is, 
we have to get to a point where we are building a normality of that 60% that's in the middle. It's okay to go to that 20% on the right. Because that 20% on the left, they're just missing upgraded and updated information. Updated and upgraded love. Updated and upgraded empathy. Updated and upgraded um leadership. Like you got people out here, man, who was raised by people who wasn't raised by nobody. You have people out here who was raised by people who was raised by nobody. And I know I may be dramatizing it, but I don't feel I am. Oh gee, I really feel like I can't even really touch the surface of a lot of things with words. I feel like there's not enough words in the English dictionary to capture just the whole emotion and picture and imagery and all of that, man. It's, it's a different type of thing, man, but Let's get into some black facts. Lord knows I've been running my big mouth. Let's get into some black facts. So we got, what, 15, 20 minutes left before the power hour over. These mosquitoes is tearing me up. I gotta go see my sons. Feel me? So. All right, since we speaking on normalities, right? I'm gonna read this one right here. This is from how y'all doing? Come on, man. What up, man? Where you been at, man? Every time I drive out of port, so I don't even see you, man. I know, I know. Where you been at, man? Busy, huh? Come on, man. I need you busy with me, man. When the next time you gonna be free? Free? Um, I'm gonna say next week, Wednesday, honestly. All right. I'll be doing the side jobs and shit going to class. Come on. Yeah, feed yourself. You still at the, you still at the corner? Yeah, yeah. Sometime in September, I'm not sure which Sunday, but one of the Sundays we're gonna do pancakes at the, um, at the park. If you wanna help, I'll make sure you at the park. In between Irvin and um, Mag, at the police station. Okay, okay, okay. Either if you wanna come and help, I got you. If not, either way, I'll make, I'll make sure you're out. You know what I'm right, saying? Yeah, All right? Okay. All right. Hey, what you doing here? Um, he's getting chewed up by mosquitoes. Well, I see. <laughs> that too. But other than that, you see, we got some trauma information. For any of our people that are experiencing these symptoms, you can call this number and get some services to get you on the road to recovery and safety. We got to chant community code of conduct, try to build some normality of peace and love through our inner cities, well, our neighborhoods. This is one of the newspapers, my old newspaper joints. This got all type of, all type of joints, all type of joints in there. You can keep that for yourself. Yep, and these just the black facts. We just read these out loud to our people, get their opinion, see if it's a myth, to see if, matter of fact, I'm actually right now. Look, you tell me if this is a myth or a fact. 49% of American children in urban areas live in low-income families. You think that's a you think that's a fact? Why do you think it's a fact? It's just a fact. Yeah, it's just a fact. <laughs> All right, but see, that's how that works with the black facts. Pull out a card, read it off, you see how you feel about it, if it's a myth or not, build on it, what's the solution, bomb. And if you're interested to whenever we do it, no, we should put it your like number that. in there, um, your name, we should, do a you. so we should do a sit down interview. Bro, that's what I do, and you know that's what I do, bro. Right, You've right, been right. the one busy. Yeah, 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 you already know, man, bro. <laughs> Needless to say, bro, whenever you ready, because like I said, you the busy one. Yeah. I'm always yeah, um, here. Um, shit, I actually lost the number. Yep, yep, yep. My boy done lost my number all that, like, man. Man, you making me embarrassed, Every man. Don't be dirty, man. I'm not, but everything, I'm listen, I'm, this is not even my phone. This is oh, my, this is man. Say 60. Gotcha. 840. 5997. 997, yep. Hey, yeah, man, hit me on. Um, like I said, when you free, and I'll let you know that date in September, okay. and then we'll go from there. And I'll, like I said, we'll, you know what I'm saying, work out something. Oh, in September 9th, I'm doing a, a guard card class. Word. Like eight hour. No, but it's gonna be on a Sunday though, so okay, even yeah. with that, I'll let you know ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. And we'd sit down and talk about, uh, I don't know. All that, whatever you need to talk about. It ain't about me, whatever you wanna talk about, we can do it. All right? All right, bro. All right, bro, I love you, bro. Right. You be safe, man. You too, man. All right, I'm gonna see you soon.
Alright. Alright, so he just sit y'all with his opinion. But my boy said that was a fact. I said, why? He he, he ain't even going to detail. My boy just said, man, that shit just a fact. <laughs> Which is funny, but not funny. Alright. This is from Community Violence and Youth Effect Behavior Substance Use and Academics. Youth growing up in urban environments with high levels of poverty, overcrowding, and violence show a wide range of maladaptive outcomes, including internalizing symptoms such as anxiety, PTSD symptoms, depression, academic failure, and school disengagement. Man, that nigga just spoke about everybody who I went to school with. I'm gonna say that's a fact. <coughs> and not necessarily a fact to be proud of, but they just told you all of the, um, they told you the symptoms. Yeah. <laughs> My boy fell on home, so. But they told you the ingredients. Look, high levels of poverty, overcrowding and violence. That alone, how you gonna concentrate? Some people can't sleep when the, when, 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 when the, when the, when the music's too loud. You know, your mom be like, turn down that damn TV. Imagine hearing this all night, sirens. People out the window, niggas gambling, shooting dice, all type of stuff. All day and all night. All day and all night. By the time you get to school, you ain't trying to hear nothing from nobody. You ain't trying to hear no teacher talk, you know, type of way. Because the normalization at home, you don't... Ah. Y'all get where I'm going with it. Y'all get where I'm going with it. Yes, sir. But needless to say, fam, he's getting close to the wrap-up, man. I'm, I'm overexcited to have come and did this today. Last week, unfortunately, I had to give a hundred roses to my great-grandmother, Roxy Jones. May she rest. And it's funny because I learned at her funeral that my great-grandmother used to do this in but so many ways. They said she used to teach people outside in the streets. She used to be outside doing her thing. So. I feel like I'm making her proud. I feel like I'm making her proud. So, needless to say, family, that was, it's a wrap. I gotta go home and get on daddy time. But before we close out, you already know how we're gonna do the mantra. We're gonna stay positive, stay motivated, and stay real. Love y'all. One.